Do you need a way to organize your thoughts and ideas? If you're like me, you put them on random scraps of paper. They're throughout the house, and when you want to recapture that idea, you can't find it. So I picked up a bunch of composition books, and I thought that they would make a great way to get organized as well as a great gift for the upcoming holidays. I have started a playlist to alter all 12 of the composition books that I purchased. So we are now in book number two, and I'm going to utilize some collage in this book. First thing, I shall put some deli paper inside the front and back cover to keep the glue off of the pages. I have some scrapbooking paper that I've held on to for a long time, haven't used in a long time as well, and I thought it would be a great time to get this out. This is out of a boho pack, and everything is in this gray and white tone or gray and black tone shades of gray, if you will. I keep rambling about the gray, but I think you can see it and understand what I mean. So I'm going to put these that I have torn into the composition that I want on the front of this book, and I'm just gluing them into place with a mixture of glue and water. Once I have that complete, I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the back side. What I found in this scrapbooking notebook were these nice little flowers that I thought would make an interesting focal for this book. But I wanted to also bring something in other than just scrapbooking paper. So let's get the scrapbooking paper glued down and into place, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a few moments. So this is the back cover, and I want another one of those flowers that uh, was on that one sheet of scrapbooking paper on this back cover. And I've decided to take half of that and cut around the outline. So it just adds a bit more interest to that flower. So let's glue everything into place on the back cover and get to work on our creative handmade element. So I've pulled my gel press out and I am using a Payne's Gray paint. We'll just get a little bit of that squirted out here on the side. And I'm going to illustrate just some random flowers on my gel press. Now, I've torn off pieces of inexpensive tissue paper. And I'm going to pull these flowers with that tissue paper. Then I'm going to add in a few circles, a few dots, and, and some random crosses as well. So I'll set those aside and let them dry. And I'll show you what we'll do with them on the front cover of that book. So I'm just going to, while I have this out, I might as well coat some additional tissue paper. We might use this. We might not. We'll see. So I had another sheet torn off. So let's just, let's just get that covered. And I'm finding that you can get two passes with the tissue paper with one application of paint. So those are all dry. I'm wetting my paintbrush with water and defining where I want to tear that. It tears very easy that way. And it prevents me from, tie, from tearing on dry tissue. It prevents me from tearing into the paint or what I have on the tissue paper. So I'm going to get as close as I can to the edges and this I will be putting on the front cover of the book. I'm just making sure it's good and dry and we'll go ahead and get all of these elements ready to go. So now that I have everything prepared, I'm just going to glue this down. And what I find with the tissue paper is that it disappears completely. And you have this nice little hand painted element that's going to appear on the front of this composition book. Now, when I'm putting the glue in water 
on that tissue paper. I'm being very careful to start at the inside of that flower and go out to avoid ripping that tissue paper. As I said before, this is a real cheap grade of tissue paper that you can find in the packing section, the gift section. Um, you can buy it online at Amazon. There's all types of places to get this very inexpensive white tissue paper. And it's very, very thin. So it will rip if you're too aggressive with your glue and water paintbrush, or if you go from the side and catch a bit of it, you'll tear it. And I know that from experience. So now let me put the shameless plug in. If you like so far what you see, go ahead and hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel. Once everything is dry, I'm coming back with a coat of Mod Podge hard coat. A couple of reasons. I happen to like the way that it looks. Um, it adds just a little bit of gloss, not a lot to your project, but it also gives it a more substantial, durable feel. And I like that a lot. And I use it in just about every project. Once that is dry, I decided why not add a little bit more interest to these flowers? And I pulled out a high gloss clear embossing powder. And I'm just very kind of messily going around the inside and just adding a tiny bit of shine to all of those flowers with that embossing powder. Nothing, nothing super intense. And that embossing powder is set with the heat gun. The one thing that I found with this, because you're dealing with Mod Podge and paper and you know, a lot of that is just freshly done. I have to be very careful with how I apply the heat, making sure to come in, come back off, come in and back off to avoid bubbling any of that um, Mod Podge or glue and water in that paper. So now I have all of that down and I think this is starting to, you know, kind of look pretty good. So we have the collaged paper, a little bit of tissue paper and paint, and now just a tiny bit of embossing to give it a little bit more interest. So I've measured my hole. I wanted a hole right in the center because I need to add a closure to this book to keep it closed. And I'm going to use a button. This button has the little shank on it. So I'm making my hole to be able to put my shank through that hole. And I am tying that off with a very thin 24 gauge piece of copper. You could use a piece of um, embroidery floss or um, by your sewing binding thread that you use if you use a wax thread. I just happen to have a ton of this 24 gauge copper in my studio, so I'm utilizing that. I'm going to the back of the book and adding my sari silk as the closure element that will come around to the front of the book and tie off around this button. But to prevent that copper from piercing my paper, I shall glue a piece of that sari silk over the top of the copper just to keep it covered, to keep it in place, and just to add an additional element of security to that closure. And the glue that I am utilizing is glitter glue. So I have that in place. And now to cover the inside, front and back of the book. Now to decorate the front inside and the inside of the back cover. Now the shank of that button, still you can feel just still some bit of closure on that. So I've decided to go ahead and let that shank pierce its way 
through this inside front cover. See how I just kind of pushed that down and allowed that shank to come through? And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that here in a second. So we have that glued down. Let's just trim that off. We have it all neatened up now. So I want to do something to define this um, shank, but I'm gonna make sure everything is glued down first. And I have some uh, gold thread, just little strands of gold thread that I am pulling out now, as well as um, that sari silk. So I am threading that gold thread through and the sari silk through the shank of that button and just creating an interesting little backdrop on the back of that shank that will appear when you open the front of that book. So there, I think that looks nice. It, comes from the back, ties around that button very nicely, we'll trim it off just a little bit, and now let's decorate the back. And I've decided to just glue down the back sheet of the composition book to the back cover. So let's glue that up. We'll flip that back sheet over. because I did not have enough of that particular pattern to do both the front inside cover and the back inside cover. So I'm gonna use the notebook paper and create a pocket with what we had left over of that particular design to add the continuity from the front to back. And we'll make that a nice little pocket that has been inked up to define that um, little keyhole there, that little thumb hole there. And that will be a nice spot to, you know, store some additional things that you pick up along the way. Going back with stays on black ink around the outside edge of all. And this is the finished piece. I added a little charm on the bottom of that sari silk to define that closure. And I think this turned out really cute. What do you think? This is number two in my decoration of composition notebooks. I purchased 12 of them. I'm going to decorate all 12, create a playlist. I think they make great little gifts for the holidays. I picked up this um, morning some pencils and pens that I can incorporate with those. And I think it will make a, a nice little stocking stuffers. So I thank you for being here. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. And of course, that playlist is right here on the left side of your screen. Thanks so much. Bye for now.